If you're curious why it's costing more now to transfer 8mm and Hi8 tapes over to a digital format, well, this might enlighten you. The tapes are going bad. Let's take a look at some of mine. Today, I'm going to talk to you about Sony tape and probably what some of the worst 8mm videotapes that I've ever come across is these ones. They're all this is the HMPX, which was the so-called professional tape. Um, but the, the H, the HMP tapes, uh, high eight and regular eight metal particle tapes, the Sony produced in the you know nineteen nineties, late eighties and early nineties, was terrible, terrible tape. Fortunately, I found this out. A long time ago when I, I stopped using Sony tape and I started using Fuji and Maxell and neither the Fuji and the Maxell tapes have had anywhere near the amount of problems that they that these ones have had the problem that happens with these tapes is the the binder is breaking down the binder is what holds the metal particles onto the tape base and they contaminate the heads. Now, I'm going to put this tape into my tape player here, where to look at the screen. I bet you I won't get a minute without this thing clogging up the heads. Pretty much guarantee it's going to clog up the heads. Um, I just went through an archive job for a client. I had uh, seven tapes to do just this past week. Five tapes were Sony tapes. They were all done in the same era. My client's tapes were all recorded between 1993 and 1995. And the five Sony tapes, I had to keep stopping and cleaning the machine repeatedly over and over and over again. One case, I think I must have cleaned the machine over a two hour tape, I probably cleaned the machine 15 times. Yet when I played his other tapes that he uh, brought me that were on Fuji, the entire two hour tape played with no problems. Now these tapes are not tapes that have been heavily used. They were his kids when they were young and the tapes were recorded and they're, they're family holidays and stuff. The tapes were recorded and they were stored in a safe deposit box. They hadn't been touched. They hadn't been played excessively. They had just been stored, but they deteriorated. Let's put this in the machine and see what happens. Uh, this should have some, I call this Winter Wonderland, so probably some snow around here. And this one here was an evaluation tape shot in 96 on an EVW 300. So this will be some shots at uh, Queen Elizabeth Park master shots. This was evaluating an EVW 300 professional high 8 camcorder. So um, these tapes haven't been played in a long time and um, we'll see what happens when I put them in the player. But I can guarantee the heads are going to clog. Guaranteed. The machine is clean now because I just used it. So when I load this we'll see if they contaminate the heads. My guess is it won't take long before we, we're looking at a snowstorm. So for this I'm using an EVS 7000. This is the machine I use as an archive machine. I use my Digital 8 machines if I've got Digital 8 tapes, but I typically use this is the one that's got the cracked um, gear that I fixed years ago by heating it with a soldering iron and it's still holding. But I typically use this machine as my playback machine because it's got this little cleaning wheel here. And this cleaning wheel is kind of unique. It's not the standard foam pad that uh, most uh, recorders have. But you can see here it's like a brush. And the nice thing about this is when the heads clog, I can just do that while it's playing. And it'll clear the clog until it clogs again. So I, I use this machine with no top on it as, a, as an archiving machine just because uh, I have to sit and watch it. But when I, as soon as I notice the picture is starting to deteriorate, I can just do that while the tape is playing and it will clear it. So let's uh, thread the tape up here and then I'll get a shot of the monitor and we'll see how long it plays before it contaminates or even if it plays at all. 
There goes in the tape. And now let's look at the monitor. And we'll just let this play here. And we'll see how long it goes. Guaranteed this is going to go to snow. Oh yes, this would have been, uh, you know what this was? Uh, this was Christmas lights. Went to like a big Christmas light display and, and filmed this years and years and years ago. Oh, 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 starting to go. I don't remember what camera recorded this. Let's see if I can uh, see if I can look at my display. If it has time code on it, it would be it would have been recorded on a VX3. I just got to find the button on this thing to change the uh, counter slide. Here we go. No, so there's no time code recorded on this tape. So this tape would have been recorded on an EVW 300 because the time code that it recorded was not rewritable consumer time code. It was professional time code that could not be read by the um, by the consumer machine. And it has uh, it has PCM sound. And the the EVW 300 recorded uh, PCM and did not record stereo so I'm looking at the I'm looking at the lights on the the playback machine there's no hi-fi stereo if it had been there we go starting to go starting to stick see what's happening is the binder here is actually starting to adhere the the binder that holds the tape coating on to the base is actually oozing through the tape and and when you see the picture break up like that start to tear that's the tape actually sticking to the drum. Now some people might comment saying, oh you've got mold on your tape because some tapes have people have found have gone moldy. Uh, that's typically tapes that were not stored correctly. Someone left the tape in a damp basement or a damp you know uh, closet or whatever. Um, my tapes are stored in a climate controlled room. So none of my tapes in my archive of tapes are, are have got any mold growing on any of them at all. Uh, it's um, so my, my studio is climate controlled, it's got air conditioning and it's got a dehumidifier. So it's um, it's the, the they're under the best storage conditions you're gonna get. The goal is to let this play until it contaminates. And we'll try a couple of other tapes too of, of some of my stuff. But yeah, this was recorded on an EVW 300, which was a very expensive camera. It was a broadcast type uh, hyper had three chip shoulder mounted camera that I used to have. And uh, it was it was like a, a beta cam, but it used high eight. It was a it was a news gathering camera is what it was for budget-minded TV stations because it delivered a picture that was almost on beta cam uh, quality but um, at uh, about a quarter of the price I think this this camera when it was new was around 12 about 12,000 bucks Yes, as you can see, some people tend to go overboard at, at Christmas time and make some pretty elaborate, elaborate displays. That's was the uh, the gondola for uh, Gross Mountain. <laughs>
as you can see it's starting to tape starting to go bad I expected that it would have cut out long before now this is actually playing longer than I've got a couple of other tapes that we can try here too that, that I know have had problems because I I already these are some of my own personal tapes I already transferred these over to um, transfer these over to DVD already and I had I had lots of fun doing it there we go heads just clogged let's uh, hit the head wheel and see if it comes back So this is another tape. This is one that I went to Disneyland in 1991 and uh, was doing the tourist thing, filming the performers and stuff. We'll see how long this one runs before it. I guaranteed this is an older tape and this is not the professional. This one was the professional grade tape. It was supposed to be better. This tape that's playing now is just a standard high 8 metal P like this one here. We'll see how long this one goes before it uh, it craps out. I'm thinking this was a uh, CCD V5000, I think. Um, yeah, this was a CCD V5000 that shot this. And how I know that is because it has both PCM audio as well as Hi-Fi audio. The V5000 recorded a Hi-Fi FM soundtrack stereo and it also recorded PCM stereo. Its bigger brother, the EVW300, which was the professional version, the three chip version, recorded AFM mono sound and PCM digital. So on the playback machine, only the PCM light lights up, but on this tape, both the hi fi stereo and the PCM stereo light lights. I've purposely got the sound turned down on here for obvious reasons because uh, I don't need to get uh, hammered with any type of claim from from the Walt Disney Company and probably nail me for this anyway. I think this is everyone's lining up for yeah everybody's lining up for the electrical parade. And as you can see, here we go, less than five minutes later. So the last few tapes we've looked at were the Metal P tape and the Metal P uh, um, professional tapes, which have clogging problems but the evaporated tape was also <clears throat> very problematic let's take a look at this high 8 metal E tape and see how bad this one is So this is the biggest problem with all these older 8mm high 8 and the evaporated tapes. And I, I don't think digital 8 tapes are immune to this either. Um, the tapes themselves, they're all, when they get to be 20-25 years old, they're all starting to fail. And you get these glitches. Now sometimes the glitch just is a, a glitch like that. Other times it'll just clog the heads and your recording is is ruined when you're trying to transfer it over so what that means for anybody in the transfer business is that we have to sit and watch the tapes it's not like the days where you could just load a VHS tape and time it and oh it's a two-hour tape okay 
set the recorder for two hours and, and, and go away and do something. Or put a DVD in and let it go for two hours and, you know, you were pretty much rest assured that it was going to transfer without a problem. Um, these tapes, the Sony tapes, I never have an issue if it's on Maxell. I never have an issue if it's on Fuji. But if someone brings me tapes that are on Sony, and specifically Sony tapes, I kind of sit and watch the entire video. And of course that drives up the cost because now I, I can't do anything else while I'm transferring these tapes. I have to actually sit there so that when the head clogs, I can stop the recording and I can clean the machine and I can pick up. And then I gotta cut all the pieces back together where they have uh, failed. So um, if you've got Sony tapes, I guess the message I'm trying to get across to you, if you've got eight millimeter Sony tapes, get them transferred over because the longer they sit the worse they're going to be they're they're all failing all those ones from the 80s and 90s they're all going they're all failing and once they get too bad where you can't play them at all uh, whatever's on them is going to be lost Okay, so then there's some shots from uh, this will be from EVW 300 on a uh, HMPX tape. As you can see, the tape has got major dropouts right from the get go. And this tape itself has not been excessively used. This tape was recorded once and it was played maybe once or twice. It would have been played to capture on the computer to edit some footage together. And this was a this was an evaluation tape when I was evaluating this camera. I took the camera out and uh, just did just did some scenery shooting with it on a tripod to evaluate the color quality and stuff. So th this tape was not excessively used. It was recorded once. It was recorded in the summer of 1996. It was played once or twice and it's put away. I mean, look at all the dropouts. It's just it's ridiculous. It, it's um, every one of these tapes. I bought a box of those Sony uh, HMPX on the advice of a Sony salesman that said these are a better quality tape, and they weren't. They were no better than the consumer tape. And um, say other brands that I've mentioned before, Maxell and Fuji, didn't have the issues that these ones did. Anyway. I think this one's probably gone on long enough. You guys can see how bad Sony tapes are. Again, the message I'm trying to get out here is if you've got your home videos on Sony tapes re recorded in the 80s and 90s, better act quick and get them transferred over. If you don't have a camera to do it yourself and you want to preserve it, you're going to have to send your tapes out to have them transferred. But uh, be prepared for these to cost a little more when, there's, when the uh, technician has to sit there and monitor the entire process. It's going to cost a little more than uh, than just putting a tape in and letting it roll. Anyway, that's that's all I'm going to say about this. And fade to head clock.
and for you still watching, I've just let the tape play. This is the head starting to contaminate the, this tape. This was actually a, a lunar eclipse that I went out to film. And uh, there it goes. The, the, the tape itself is... This has maybe been 10 minutes of playing time since uh, I last spoke when I was on the beach there. And as you can see, it's just can continue to go to the point where it's going to go to a blue screen. Oh, they, they had just cleared themselves off a bit, but it'll be back. Don't worry. That's Sony tape for you. Sony quality tape. Their three-quarter inch tapes, by the way, were no better. All the three-quarter inch tapes we used were crap. And there it goes. Total head clog. Video is muted. Thanks for watching.